Your heart is the compass, you know, the head is loud and it's overbearing and it's really a mechanism to protect you. But your heart is where the true, your true north yes. always appears. Yeah. And when you're in your heart, you just have the most incredible insights and breakthroughs and connections with the right thing, the next best thing for you. And, you know, if, if there's one thing that you take away from this is just connect back to the subtle voice inside of your body that is constantly talking to you in the form of whether it's a feeling in your stomach or it's an upset or it's an ache, it's a pain, or it could be a sense of joy. You feel elated to do something, follow that. That's called following your bliss. That's following your compass, your internal GPS to find your way. Hey, better together with Marie Menounos fans. It's Mr. Marie Menounos coming at you for part two of our interview with Gabby Piccarelli. If you're somebody that uh, believes, as I do, that many of our ailments are the result of our emotions and you want to find new ways, life hack ways to treat them um, without spending a lot of money or a lot of time, um, this is a great, great interview for you. Hopefully you enjoyed part one and part two, I promise, will be every bit as beneficial. So with that, let's go to part two of our interview with Gabby Piccarelli. Okay, so I love this. We've got nutrition, exercise, volunteer, we're journaling. Any other life hacks I can squeeze out of you, Gabby? <laughs> All right. This is really um, something that can help you and the person. Again, that talking about that whole circle of life, yeah. when you give, you actually receive. When you, when you give, you're blessing the person that you're giving it to. And so I think that putting yourself in a mindset, especially now where we've all been through, you know, our own stories and our own, you know, in the last year and a half, our own situations. Why don't we all try to create a community among your contacts, among your community? And even if it's just one person, if you have the chance right now to reach out, I would say reach out to somebody, tell them that you're there for them, and that will create that, that cycle that we mm. talked about. The second thing is, if you have the ability to be in, the, in contact with somebody or somebody at home, take some oil. It could even be cooking oil, you know, olive oil. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I happen to use castor oil. I've been using castor oil since the day I started rubbing feet, really. Mm -hmm. And um, take some oil, warm it up in your hands just like this. Start by just working your own hands and putting it into your own skin and your own feet so that you can start working the receptors of your own hands. I believe that our ability to heal lies among all of us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take somebody with any special talents or special gifts. We all have the gift and the ability to heal somebody else, including ourselves. Yes. I agree. And so if you take some oil, start massaging it into your own feet. First of all, you're doing yourself the greatest act of self-love and self-care. Now, find somebody at your home or in your community and massage their feet. Reflexology is yes. this incredible art that, again, has existed since you know centuries ago. It's nothing new. And if it's the test of time that means that obviously there are tremendous benefits massage somebody's feet go online there's tons of free resources send me an email send me a dm i'd be happy to help you but just go online look at a chart and say you know what i can help somebody just by rubbing their feet yeah so when lisa you know that last six months i knew it was hard because she couldn't move. It was it was hard. hard. And uh, the one thing I did do is I would just give her the foot and hand rubs. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I'd just do it with a cream, like a vitamin E cream that I like to use. Exactly. And then mm -hmm. Maria would get me some CBD cream. And, um, you know, she loved it. Because even when she couldn't speak, she would nod. Do you want it? She would just nod. But I will tell you, there's times where Maria, her head's really killing her from her tumor. And I call it overheating. You know, when she's done too much, too much light, mm -hmm. too much activity. And um, I'll say, all right, honey, just lie, lie down. And I, I have like a stool <laughs> and slides up and I just go to work on the feet and mm -hmm. I'll do the hands and I'll do the arms, but especially the feet. 
and she'll I I don't know one time it hasn't worked where she's just like oh wait my my pain's gone my pain in my head is gone mm -hmm. and I think also too it helps you helps me almost how, how they tell you that like you ever hear how kneading dough or put it playing with clay they'll give that to people for therapy kind of just to just get the energy out of oh. your body so for me I have all that nervous energy and if I can put it into a massage and especially of the feet and again I didn't I don't know what you know and I don't know reflexology and I probably I'm gonna learn it more because I've learned to kind of give a good foot massage so but I've seen it really work um I have a question for you uh okay because I know a lot of people are grossed out by feet I'm not. It's it's fine, especially you know, because I we I heard from a family member who was like, "Ugh, gross! You're you're touching her feet," and I'm like, "Well, it's not like Lisa's out running marathon. She's been in bed here, but okay. But for other people, like, could they? Is it okay to sanitize the feet with a antibacterial and then work on it? I mean, Does that look, hurt in any sure. way? No, wipe them down, or if it makes you feel better, um even put on like a like a glove or something if you don't that's want true. to touch that's the person's true. foot yeah. you know um but the idea is that does that prevent the that healing connection. though with the with the do you know what i mean do, do you want skin on skin or I is mean, it the pressure you'd, you'd you'd probably want that's skin what i'm on skin. thinking it's better yeah but you know if it takes again you warming up or you adapting then then by all means if you just use those like thin latex free gloves that are like super thin that are transparent, you know, start with that just to get yourself warmed up to the idea. I feel that it is the greatest gift that you can offer somebody yeah. is, you know, and I've said it right in the, in the beginning, like you guys are just such an example of purity and giving. And, and this is exactly what I was talking about. It's like giving somebody a foot rub. I mean, when someone's in pain, yeah. in severe pain, or even not, they're just stressed out and they're, mm -hmm. you know, have a headache you have the ability to relieve them of yes. that yes what greater feeling for you and for them right yeah yeah no one loses so, and it's free it's my favorite word it's free it doesn't cost it's you free. anybody it's another to, thing right so think about what you know giving that as even a gift to somebody um yeah i think that's really amazing um Wow. And there are also, you know, touch points on the whole body. And if you're interested in this, um, again, I'd be happy to to help anybody interested. But you can all these resources are free online. You can pull up a hand chart, a foot chart, an ear chart, a chart of the face, for example. These are all areas that you can non-invasively, without any kind of contraindications, help somebody. Gabby, could we do, uh, would you be interested in doing... Um... We have these heel events on Patreon and could you, would you be interested in doing one on <clears throat> teaching us about uh, pressure points on the body, which pressure points are attached to what and how we can help other people and ourselves by applying pressure to those? Could we do that? I would that? love that. Okay. So that let's, would be amazing. That would be such a benefit to our heel squad. Um, I would love that myself because I, you know, yeah. I don't know. I only go with my instinct. I don't you know, mm -hmm. when I do it, but I would love to really know the truth. Yeah. Um, and it's easy. It's simple. It doesn't cost much. It's just, it's amazing. You know what the whole castor oil thing? It's funny. I, 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 uh, I know Kelsey, someone just had Kelsey do how much of it? Just a teaspoon, a tablespoon? Uh, I'm supposed to do two tablespoons. So Gab, I've, I've been like, whenever I massage, I'll use castor oil, but mm -hmm. You know, but my, with my crazy it. stomach, this um, uh, someone had me. Yeah, drink it. It makes me want to throw. I know, up. but I love it for her. I don't know why. My instinct says it's whatever's going on in that stomach. This would be good for it. Can you speak to what your instincts are as well? So there is a book again written in like the early 1900s by Edward Case, C A Y C E, Edward Case. And he was the um, sort of, he discovered the benefits of castor oil mm. and he would use castor oil in packs. So if you're having an upset stomach or, you know, you've been diagnosed with these things, this is what I actually used to do. I used to do castor oil packs. So I would put tons of castor oil, an organic high quality um, castor oil on my entire abdomen and I would massage it in there 
and then I would cover it with um, like a cotton um, a cotton uh, like pad basically or even an old t-shirt it doesn't matter you can cut the old t-shirt put it on there and then I would heat it up with a hot water bottle mm. so I would heat the liver I would heat my spleen on the left side and then I would heat the entire lower abdomen so eventually you end up with this incredible sensation of warmth and subtleness like su it's just the skin becomes so supple but it's the healing benefits of the oil the molecule of the oil that is most similar to our own cells and our body recognizes it and really absorbs it very deeply inside the tissue of the body and gabby could you use one of the moisture heating pads as well the reason i like that better is because it co would cover more area yeah definitely you could. I love. I'm this. old school, so I have a hot water. No, bag. I do too. I do too. Boiling water. No, no. Listen, the hot water bottle. I have told more people who are heartbroken. I yeah. fill that thing up. I overfill it, so it's heavy. So you've got the weight of the bottle plus the heat, and I'm like, just it's trust me. Lie yeah. on your recliner or your bed or your chair, and we're gonna put that on your chest and just breathe, and you'd be there surprised. Is something so yes. soothing about yes. that. If you don't have a poodle or a Bichon. <laughs> yeah. or, or a nice puppy <laughs> to put on there. Believe me, no, because I've used that too. <laughs> My poor dogs. Um, yeah, I love that. And so with, yeah, with Kelsey, you know, it's funny because you're, you're mentioning your cycles, you know, which led to, you know, Kelsey's had problems with her cycles and then she has the stomach issue where her stomach is really... Two months pregnant. Yeah, it's bloated and awesome. she does, and it's really frustrating because she's doing everything that's asked for her take this supplement eat this don't eat that and barely eat anything um and it's frustrating but i know someone mentioned the castor and i'm glad because i don't my instinct says that that would be a good thing well, to cook my, the tummy my old yoga teacher shout out to kate would be smacking me right now because she has told me for years to do a castor oil pack and i was always like what literally years years so gab i'm gonna try that I love that. It's incredible, really. And don't throw out the, the, the cotton. Just put it in like a Ziploc bag or something and just keep it because as yeah. it, you want it to be, you're going to wash it after a few times, but you don't need to like, you know, throw it out every time. Use it um, multiple times a day. If it brings you relief, um, do it morning and night throughout the day. Just have it there. And I would literally go to work with this thing absorb the oil i would put saran wrap around it so that the oh. oil can come through yeah but just so that the oil stays there so that it can wow. keep absorbing into the into my skin hmm. wow i love that yeah mm -hmm. this has been a it's been a frustrating journey for her and now for me i'm involved in it and it's just getting me really <laughs> aggravated me <too>. because <laughs> she's been dealing with this now for almost 10 years and wow. i think the body i think her body can't process it like it used to whatever's going wrong in there at the source when she was younger it was okay now it's just getting to the point where i think a lot of the plumbing is worn out from whatever but it's uh it, and it's your body calling for something you know it could be as simple as not enough hydration well she, no no so she so she's got um giant water bottles i've never seen anyone drink this much in my life hmm. so she's been i think i i just recently I, again yeah, but you know better than me. I'm just going with my, you know, old carny worker, like hack life spirit. And I I think because she drinks so much water, I don't think the body is absorbing the water. Absorbing it. So that's why she's plumping out. Yes. So the, recently so she was off. Thing to, I'd love to yes, hear what you have to say. I, I love that, that you say that because it, I always say it's not how much water you drink. Of course, it's important to have the minimal minimum requirement, but it's how much you absorb that matters. And yeah. so what I would um, offer to Kelsey is that if she drinks, first of all, from a glass mason jar like this, doesn't matter, you fill it up with room temperature or slightly warmer water never anything cold and she doesn't she a, doesn't she's good with that mm -hmm. so we'll go with good. that so far then you're gonna good and then you're gonna put a tiny pinch of a high quality either pink Thanks. himalayan salt or malden salt or even celtic salt that's mm -hmm. the one that i'm currently using and i put a little pinch of salt in the water the water won't taste salty if it does you put too much in there it's just gonna have a bit of a different texture when you drink it. 
and then put some more organic fresh lemon juice in it just a little squeeze not a whole ton and ha and try that try that with the salt because the salt is the driver what it what might be happening and we'll have to get into a further discussion with this specifically with her but it could be that her the villi of her small intestine so they're like little tentacles that absorb everything absorb mm -hmm. your nutrients absorb the hydration have been damaged in some way mm -hmm. and so what you want to do is you want to help the body to drive the hydration into the cell into the body into the tissue the salt is the driver it, that makes so much sense gab because i've always been uh not always in the last couple years I always wake up like incredibly dehydrated and I was telling Kevin like I literally get anxious if I don't like carry my big water bottle around because I know how dehydrated I get and I'm like how are you getting so dehydrated yeah. when you drink like a hundred ounces of water a day I don't understand and that villi has been damaged over the years as I'm saying like yeah. now it's not absorbing the water so per, per and again I, I just want to be strict about this so the pinch of the salt mm. um, and the the lemon Per how many ounces would we say? So if you're having like, let's say 500 milliliter glass, like a half a liter of, of water in a glass, you literally take a tiny pinch. Like it, it will be, if it were like little granules of salt, it'll be like four or five granules of salt. Mm -hmm. You have to taste that the water has been altered in some way because it's going to have a different texture on your in your mouth, but it should not taste salty. If it's salty, that's too much. Too much, yeah. And, and so, if it I mean, is too much, will it hurt us, Gabby, or no? I mean, we don't want too much sodium in our bodies. That's gonna that's gonna um, you know it regulates the the certain other chemicals in the body. We don't want that. We just want enough to allow it to be a a, a driver of the hydration. Gotcha. You don't want to have too much sodium. Definitely not in your food, but but not in your water either. Gotcha. Right. I'm in. Okay. Any other, like, so anything else like, supplement-wise? So I'm not a big supplement pusher. I feel that we have to make it happen with me. Oh and and I got too many. You know, I really, I, I just take everything away. As a matter of fact, this morning I was doing a really, I'm, I'm getting somebody prepared for hip surgery tomorrow, and I've been working with him for a, a while now. And the whole premise of my work here was to prepare his body for the hip replacement, which will happen tomorrow. And funny enough, I was working with his gut and people would say, well, what, what would that have to do with anything? He's having a hip replacement. Well, here's the thing. Whenever you go through any surgery, any level of surgery, especially at, you know, he's 78 years old. So we're dealing a little bit with a, a bit of an, a, an older body you want to make sure that your body has the capacity to number one process the trauma that it will go through and that all runs through your liver yes your digestive system the emotions of you you know preparing the anticipation of the surgery all of it all of it gets filtered through your liver every single supplement every single yeah. ounce of water every thought and emotion goes through your liver and I, because again, through my own experience, I had to take care of my liver so deeply and I still do. It's like, I coddle it like my little child because it's one of the organs that number one can serve you because it can be regenerated. But number two, if it's, you know, misused or abused, it's also that sort of that area that, that can cause the greatest amount of pain. And I think Kelsey, this is I'm almost directly speaking to you because I think it's, some, it's something with the liver that needs to be looked at. One and so before right. you do anything, I take everything away. So I yes. took away all his supplements, what, everything. This is what I've been trying to say. And I did, yeah. And it's like I have been. doing, you know, but that's why I, I think, yeah, every time it's, again, it goes back to you. What I said earlier about how much money you can spend. Maria, I would, was telling Kelsey this story when Maria, when she was having a, hormone problem in her 20s she had breakouts of acne severe it's hard to be on camera at the time and so she went to all the Hollywood doctors and we went to this one doctor and he sold her on two thousand dollars worth of skin products literally maybe maybe it was less like twelve thirteen hundred whatever with the visit okay comes back couple none of it worked a couple months later and rather than saying oh geez okay 
uh, I'll like give you your money back or give you new. He was like, okay, no, no, no. Now buy all these. And Marie was going along with it. And I'm like sitting there going, what? and I think it was the third time that he, she went back and he recommended just, okay, now buy another thousand or two thousand. And, and, I said, and, I, and finally she went down to Dermalogica. She changed her diet. She worked on her hormones and she went to Dermalogica for like $60 <laughs> facials and everything went away. So mm -hmm. I feel like even with Kelsey, it's the same thing. You know, we keep hearing like, oh, this one and that one and my my line of vitamins and my line of this. And I'm like, I, I, I don't I don't think that's the answer here. I think uh, there's some damage there that needs to get fixed. And I think that everything needs a bit of a break. You 100%. know, I think her, her organs need a break. That's what I think we need to do. So the I liver. Agree. So it's saying you think it's liver. I think so. It's it sounds like she has a lot of symptoms um, of what I was feeling actually in it's my a, early, you know, in my late teens. Very very similar. Yeah. And um, and thank God I caught it. You know, I I didn't have to suffer for as long as she did, but just from experience, that is what helped me out the most. And they're simple solutions, and I feel like the body has everything it needs. Sometimes it just needs to be regulated and it needs to. The polarity of your body the energy the frequency of your body needs to be restored another thing that is very simple that doesn't cost anything that you can do right now to help the environment that you're healing in because you cannot heal in the same environment that you got ill in something in the environment has to change meaning if you are for example plugging in your phone your laptop by your head at night in the place that you are supposed to get you know six seven eight hours of rest and real rest deep rem sleep and you're that's being interrupted through these low level um electromagnetic fields but also emfs that could be also very disruptive to her sleep mm -hmm. therefore to her hormonal production mm -hmm. to her ability to recover the following day her energy levels and for anybody take all the electronics out from your room especially if you're charging overnight if you need to use your phone as your alarm clock put it on airplane mode but do not charge anything by your head you could be we are all sensitive to this but there are certain people that are extra sensitive to mm. it and i've seen this firsthand where somebody tosses and turns and can't get sleep can't wake up in the morning groggy needs six coffees just to get going and we make some of these changes one being the, the electronics by their head and they wake up in the morning feeling brand new. The level, the quality of sleep has improved that dramatically. Wow. Yeah, we're about to go on a bit of a hiatus and I think that that's going to be really good, Kelsey. I think so too. Yeah. But I think... Um, yeah. All yeah. these things. I'm just Gabby, like, we're going to keep you posted. I think, but it, it's funny. I think a lot of people have stomach issues. I think a lot of people, I, I, more of my friends have cycle issues. And the yeah. fact that they're connected, I think this, what you're going through, you're just in a bit of a more of an extreme than some people. But I think it speaks to a lot of people out there. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. So, Gabby, where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Jeez, we could have conversations till tomorrow morning. <laughs> I know. Well, no, I love, I love everything that you you've done for us and that you're doing. Um, my goodness, yeah, might have to be. I don't know. We'll have to revisit this at some point. I think. And yeah, we're um, gonna have you on. Gab will talk about a heel event because I think that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm also oh. gonna have Cab rub my feet. Yeah, <laughs> haven't I done that? I've never done no. that. No, I'm so in. You, but I've done your neck. You and your upper, you know, I think yeah. with people, the neck yeah. and the upper shoulder yeah. blades, the people, because mm -hmm. they're sitting at desks and I feel like a lot of people hold, I know I hold a ton in oh, there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I usually like, that's usually my go-to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we can do that. Yes. Sure. Why I not? Would keep love you that. And it's yeah. so easy and really requires, I mean, very little, which I love. I love anything that's portable, easy, doesn't cost a lot, and is so effective. I love that. You know, Gab, I wanted to ask, because I'm over here like, I want to Google reflexology near me. Are there things mm -hmm. that we should look out for and look for if you do, for mm. someone who does want to do that? Yeah. I mean, look, reflexology is such um, a non-invasive, really, method of treating the body. There will always be better mm. therapists 
than others. And it's just, you know, it's based really on the energy and their intention of, of how they want to approach this. Some people, like I say, approach life where it's all about me, gimme, 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 gimme. And other people are like, I want to just serve. I want to give. And I think that when you become in tune with yourself, you start to feel out the people who that are there to serve. And therefore they make the best therapists, the best counselors, the best friends, like they're people that are truly wanting to help. You know, and so if you go to a place and you don't feel quite right, even though the therapy is wonderful, ask for somebody else, yeah, go yeah. see somebody else yep. there or find a different place. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think there's, there are no mistakes. There are never, you know, you're never in the wrong place. Take it as a learning experience. What did I learn from this? All right, maybe I need to keep searching. I need to look for somebody who's you know, different, better, whatever it is that you felt. And yeah. maybe not, maybe that person is, has, listen, I came across the world, literally the best reflexology in in the first try, but I was also looking for it. You're open. Right. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. it's that pause and that awareness and, and knowing that um, if you do feel in your heart or your gut that this person is not in it for the right reasons or you don't mesh with them, it's okay to be like, Hey, I'm out. I'm out. Exactly. I don't care. Yeah. You know, don't worry about hurting their feelings or whatever. It's if their intentions are pure, they'll understand and say, "Hey, I'm not the healer. For, I'm not the coach for you. I'm not the healer for you." And if and if they have an ego, then you don't want to be working with them anyway. Oh, but man. I think it's and Kels that, and I yeah. had this incredible conversation when we spoke on the phone about just this. Mm. And can you expand oh on gosh. it? Because a lot of our listeners and viewers we're kind of the good ones. The, I mean, they're the good ones and they're the ones who are always afraid of offending people. Don't want to, you know, and don't think they're good enough to demand better. And so please, yeah, let's talk about this. So if you feel that perhaps it's not the right fit for you, you need to find the person that will resonate perfectly with you. And trust me, when you find that level of of care you will say oh my gosh it will just feel differently and the reason for that is because I'm a therapist and I was not always in this seat I was also on the other side and I fortunately came across somebody who had zero ego involved in their practice meaning that whether you were you know Joe whoever off you know that called in randomly for an appointment or somebody else of a different, you know, different social scale or whatever you want to call it, it didn't matter. It was all the same. The intention was so pure and the level of care and love that you, that she displayed for all of us was the same, you know, and there was no attachment really to the outcome. I am here doing my best. You are here doing your best. I, I truly feel that we are all here and we're doing our best with what we know right now. When you find somebody that has removed their ego from the formula of helping you, I mean, hang on to that person so tight because yeah. they're there for the right reason. And so are you, so are you. Meaning that maybe there's something for you to explore in that relationship. Maybe there's something beyond just the physical benefit that you will gain from being in that person's presence with their healing hands maybe there's something so much bigger that you need to extract from this connection oh, yep. yeah i love that i think and you know it, there are occasions too i want to caution where you may not get off on the right foot but give it a session or two mm -hmm. you know what i mean because i know mm -hmm. i didn't get off on the right foot with a my first therapist I ever worked with and then she gave me tons and tons of breakthroughs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's too, it's like you just, you have to listen to yourself, right? You can't like, no matter if that person's like, oh, your friend loved them and this person loved them and that person, it still might not be your person. Yes. So yeah. So you totally. have to trust that intuition and really like, don't ask for everyone else's advice and opinion. Like if you yeah. listen to you. Take that pause. And that, you know, yeah. we always keep, that's why they say trust your gut. Yeah. But even we had Lala Kent on from Vanderpump Rules and she was 14 and in an elevator and, and with a guy, an older man, and she knew something bad was going to happen. And she's like, and that's why I want you women to all trust your gut. Even at 14, like I knew she's, you know, but, but again, I think we, 
we don't um and again this is from dave keckner we listen too much to our brain and not enough to our mm -hmm. bodies mm -hmm. our gut mm -hmm. which tells us these things so we rationalize or we medicate or we cover it up or we sweep it under the rug or like it's on to the next thing rather than taking that pause and go no 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 this this just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. and i think you're right i think and when ego gets in the way uh of caretakers you know we had that issue here and um thank god for maria to police it you know along with me because you know i wasn't going to have that my yeah. lisa was like my baby i'm like no and i remember just looking at it like lisa you, you think i'm ever going to let anyone around you that's gonna make you feel <laughs> and she just had this she couldn't talk but i could see the smirk on her face i'm like that's never happening but there were people that it was like i just would say to them like you know in the nicest way we we're here for lisa's needs not for our own i'm happy to be wrong if it's you know um, if it's if it's going to mean something better for Lisa I'm happy to be wrong but right now it's about her needs and then when she was kind of no longer with us we made it about dad's needs because he was elderly mm -hmm. and type 1 diabetic and yeah and we and it was and it was hard on our egos it was, believe mm -hmm. me there's a lot of stuff I had to swallow I didn't want to swallow but I just had to go keep going back to okay what's the you know what why are we here so with a caretaker or healer it's got to be okay i'm trying to help you as a person um you know but and that's your internal compass i also feel too like your heart is the compass you know the head is loud and it's overbearing and it's really a mechanism to protect you but your heart is where the true your true north yes. always appears yeah and when you're in your heart you just have the most incredible insights and breakthroughs and connections with the right thing the next best thing for you and you know if, if there's one thing that you take away from this is just connect back to the subtle voice inside of your body that is constantly talking to you in the form of whether it's a feeling in your stomach or it's an upset or it's an ache it's a pain or it could be a sense of joy you feel elated to do something follow that that's called following your bliss. That's following your compass, your internal GPS to find your way. And again, I just think too few of us, myself included, we don't do it. And I think this show has helped me a lot mm -hmm. just to at least know that. I might not be applying it all the time, but at least to know that. Yeah. Because um, I see Maria do it all the time. She's like, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. go ask. I'm going to go find the. But I think you got to sit alone and all these things you'd said, you know, be in nature. Be, be alone in quiet time journal all those things help you get to those answers I, I think you know Gabby too the other thing is I think when I see sometimes people who are super smart I, I will often say to them your IQ will betray you because you're so smart you you why would you ever be wrong you've gotten an A on every test you've like you know figured out every problem um, so you can't be wrong in your mind but of course everyone's going to be wrong but a lot of times people are too smart for their own good in that respect. So that's why I say like <laughs> to people who have like, you know, average IQs. No, it's it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, I had someone tell Definitely. me, a really respected doctor tell me this, that he liked to work with doctors who had B, C plus and B averages more than the doctors who had A oh, averages yeah. in college. And like he that. said because <laughs> they had hu more humility mm -hmm. and were more open. But sometimes the ones that were like that smart were like, no, I can't no, be wrong. All, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, right? Driven by the ego, yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, ego is there to also fuel us and and you know give us passion and drive, but I think it's all got to be this incredible balance of you know heart direction and then of course your your mind that propels you to to do things because without the ego we wouldn't even be able to get up you know and, yeah. and do stuff something yes. like this for example you know yeah <laughs> like, well when you think of some of the greatest creations. Well, all of them, they came from, you know, man-made creations. It came from someone's ego. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yep. you have to have it. But it goes back to what you said earlier. It's balance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's balancing it. Here's the really interesting thing, which, um, you know, it's happened for me. It's happened for many different um, therapists that I work with. I, I love to collaborate with other people. I think that's just so the fascinating, great. Yeah. fascinating thing about collaborating. But... Um, a lot of things come in the form of a dream to people. A lot of insights come through this, 
you know, this idea that was dreamt about this entire book is a result of a dream. Wow. Wow. The I other know. therapy that I we didn't have the time to talk about today is called clavi therapy. I, I use them in conjunction with each other. Can you, it, can you spell you, that for me? C L mm -hmm. A V I and then therapy. So clavi, clavi therapy. therapy. Okay. So that's that's really the um, the therapy that is I mean, that really pushed this whole experience to another level. But that entire book, which is this thick, it's about a thousand pages that my original manual that I um, trained from with the doctor who developed this in Poland, it came to him in a dream. What is it, Gab? Can a you vision. give us a little? Can you tell us a little bit about it? About so clavi therapy. therapy. Yeah. Yes, so clavi therapy is also a non-invasive um, treatment. Most people say it's most similar to acupuncture, mm. but I don't use needles. I use, um, think of like sticks or pencils that have a sharp edge and it works on the surface of the skin. So I use the entire body skin. It is the largest organ. It is the organ that speaks to us in loud messages. Every little wrinkle, every little mark, everything has something to say about the internal system. And what I work on is actually the central nervous system. I work on rebuilding nerves that have been damaged, severed. Um, it gained a lot of traction here on this continent as a result of me working on people that had massive concussions and all these incurable situations where there wasn't even any type of you know, a pharmaceutical drug for it, um, let alone it being incurable as a whole. But for example, um, like frozen shoulders in athletes, concussions, um, all of these types of deviations of the spine. I mean, I've been able to adjust people without ever touching the spine. It's just by reinforcing the central nervous system and building back that most fundamental system that keeps us alive. It's like the power in the house. It's our light switch. And when there is a short somewhere along this incredibly intricate system of the body, it manifests in signs, in physical signs. And you you recognize it on the skin. And so I use the skin like literally like an x-ray machine. I look at your entire back. I look at your posture, how you sit, how you stand, how you move. and And then I regenerate the nerves that have been damaged over time, whether it's through you know, you had an accident or some kind of event or something very traumatic in your life, it all, it all resides in the central nervous system. So it's an incredibly, incredibly revolutionary way of looking at the human body. And I've, and I've coupled that with foot reflexology just to kind of calm the system down after a session, because it is quite, um, quite intense, but we've seen, I've seen tremendous results um by incorporating all of this and and that's really i think what also allowed me to incorporate everything environment nutrition food emotions your spirituality your con your connection to your community and your family and all of it it's all part it's like hitting it from all angles where along this story do we need to rebuild you know your experience and give it a new meaning rebuild your experience while wow, that's heavy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah how, how do we how do we hack that <laughs> how do we rebuild <laughs> how do we give it a new meaning it's a process it's a journey look at like like anything you know it's like once you arrive then what you say oh now what you know it's the journey it's all of these incredible experiences and breakthroughs that allow us to understand the full meaning of life, which is why I have such reverence for humans and people's suffering and just people's experiences of life, because I've seen so many situations and, and I just feel for, I, I'm a huge empath, but I feel for your experience and I know that it can be better. And yeah. and here's a method to getting there. It's not going to be fast. It's not going to be quick, but it's going to be worth it. Wow. And you have to apply all, as an empath, you have to apply. We at the beginning of the interview, we talked about this, but as an empath, you probably have to apply all these things to keep yourself right. 
sustained. 100%. This is my life. I promise you everything that I've talked about and that I preach, I practice it. I mean, right now, if you saw my desk, what I have going on, it's like a biohacking station, (laughs) you know, like, it's just the, what I do, it's, it's how I function best. And I figured out this matrix for myself through my own exploration, through my own pain. It's the greatest gift. Amazing. You're amazing. Gabby, what a joy and a pleasure to speak to you. I know this conversation will continue. And I think that, yeah, I would love um, you to do a Patreon Hill event where you teach us oh, yeah. about the pressure points in our body that we can, you know, hack ourselves yeah we can help our loved ones mm-hmm. even ourselves to, yeah. to to touch and and massage um gabby where do we find you so you can um contact me through my website which is www.rpt.health or on my instagram at at gabby g-a-b-y p-i-c-c-i-r-i-l-l-i on instagram yeah, and I love your the, even your name of your company, Regenerative Pathway Therapy. Yeah, so good. I love that. Mm-hmm. All right, Gabby, we will. This conversation will continue, um, but thank you so much for everything you've done for our family and now for the Heal Squad. And uh, and again, um, I just think you have a lot more ahead of you, which is going to be fun for you too. So. I honor you both, and Maria, who is not here, but she's always close to my heart. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic uh, interview with Gabby. Um, I think there's two things that I share with her: is that a lot of our physical ailments are the base are rooted in emotions yeah. and yeah. Um, other things. And then also, you know, the other thing um, is that you don't have to spend all the money um, to find the answers and you Mm -hmm. there are ways to uh to do it yourself and Pooja you were saying um made a good point too that a lot of people even if they have the money might not feel comfortable at first talking to a therapist and pouring their heart and soul out to a therapist Mm. and Mm -hmm. I think that's why Gabby's some of Gabby's ways don't involve that right yeah Mm. sometimes your form of therapy doesn't have to be traditional therapy like it can be great and that's awesome if you want to talk about your feelings but if you're not ready to go there yet you know it's good to know that you can meditate you can walk like listening to a podcast like those type of things that you might already be doing but you don't realize are helping you like actually are so it was it was reassuring to hear that from her well and i like to kevin i've always talked about that when it comes to like to traditional therapy he's like it's great if you can like figure out or like if you have something that you can bring them right to the therapist bring to the therapist bring to the therapist yeah. versus just kind mm-hmm. of go in and not know what's going on like for me i don't like talking about my feelings and emotions and i think that's part of my issue but there has been things that like being able to like walk and talk with kev i'm like oh my gosh you're right like he'll give me like aha moments that i can then bring to her and i think that that makes the world of difference so yeah these these things like showering i mean taking that hot shower right mm-hmm. i mean the castor oil pack you know i'm trying that giving your own self a, just a hand massage mm-hmm. these are all like such easy and you know, the other thing i love about gabby is like i love when someone who makes a living off of doing this this sort of thing is telling us you don't need to come to me you can do it yeah. you're like that's yeah. so cool. yeah she's in it for the right reasons yes and I think even finding a therapist that is in symbiosis with you, it's in it for the right reasons. Not being afraid to switch out. She said she got lucky with her first, but she admitted it was luck. It was u- what the yeah. universe lined it up. But um, yeah, I thought, um, but even, you know, journaling and nutrition. Mm-hmm. But this is stuff that we hear from so many other people. So le- even with journaling, we had two different people. With, with the guests that talked about rewiring your brain. Yeah. That was Mm -hmm. oh no I'm sorry the female female, Dr. Leaf she was it was journaling and then we have the burn journal with Nicole yep Nicole Sachs Nicole Sachs so you know it's like you can take this map and then go online and by the way just our library of shows Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just a big believer in you don't have to spend um, with anything in life I think there's always I, there's always going to be 
um, more affordable hacks and you know you can go to um, you know you can go to a self-help seminar and spend ten thousand plus dollars and that's great and get a ton out of it but then there's also ways without spending the money that you can get that information if you're willing to do the work um, and do the research so um, I, I like that because that's been always my experience and yeah. I've seen Maria who's been exposed to the big money people and they look at her like a big checkbook and they'll you know I was saying on the episode there was a one skincare guy and it was like every time she walked in the door all he was doing was selling his products and you said you would just you dealt with that too Kelsey as oh well gosh, for yes. acne right <laughs> yeah yeah and I wasn't a walking checkbook but they were like but they almost take pity or no they don't take pity they almost look at the people like my skin was so bad they knew I would do anything yeah anything so it was like okay I'll do the monthly facials but then also add on the lasers and then also buy this like we're desperate yeah so yeah yeah and I get it and there's times we you know there's times you can you spend the money you get the result that's great but I feel like there's just more often than not it's like mm. yeah the only thing there's no hack for is time Sometimes you, you know, some time with things you need time. It's funny that I'll bring it over to filmmaking. There was a, an old director who said, you know, now we used to have to edit physically film on these steam back tables and we'd physically mm -hmm. have to cut the film and tape it together and then play it and say, okay, that edit doesn't work. Let's go recut it. I mean, such a long and messy process. And now with computers, you know, that is like sped up by such an incredible amount of time. It's so fast. He said, but we still haven't found a way to speed up the brain. So you might make those edits, but when you're, you know, as a filmmaker or an editor, sometimes, you know, you need months yeah, because you need to get away from it, come back at it. You see it in a different way. Oh, wait, now I see why that scene doesn't work. I said, you just need time. And so certain things in life, unfortunately, take time, time to have the realizations, the revelations, or time for the practices and the treatments to take effect we just all come from we're americans so we just want a pill right we, <laughs> yeah, we want it immediately and by the way jillian um, michaels was saying this she was saying you know her problem with a lot of the millennial trainers was that they wanted to life hack their way to be her and she's like you just can't replace 30 years of what i've done and what i've learned um you can only do it so much so i think that but I think money-wise, I don't think you have to spend as much as you think you do. You just have to be relentless yeah. and um, open-minded and, um, yeah, willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. So it was really refreshing t to hear that. Um, she's just a great soul. Great soul. I'm excited for my um, my Kevin foot massage. <laughs> yeah, another one. I'll give you one. So Alyssa gets them for me. Mar Alyssa Maria. Does. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, well, I will say it. I love doing it. When Marissa's wrist, she broke her wrist. She fell and broke her wrist. And poor thing. She like really messed her up. Um, oh yeah, but, I forgot about but that. But I was able to, you know, massage it, massage it, and I and her therapist was surprised because it really accelerated the healing. Like she was, it it, it was more mobile. Yeah. But yeah, that's touch that's feeling and and it's good for both parties and again it's so funny my dad used to always give erica foot massages i don't i've never really got any though <laughs> i have to bring that she always asked for it though so i'm gonna have to bring that up with him she asked for it yeah and they just were like kelsey's got it yeah so probably and that was maybe I'm a little like, too wait much a second. Which, well in the long run it's going to be continue to be your blessing that they were oh, like totally that. um but anyway yeah i think so the fact maybe. that a foot massage is cheap and easy to and it's easy to do yeah. you know and by the way i've never i only go with my feelings or what yeah my sensitivity and how i would like pressure applied and what i would like and but i'm i'm sure there's so many youtube videos totally on how to do it and i'm at the point now where i i will get a stool or a chair like it's nice to get an office chair at the end of someone's bed because i want to be comfortable too you know i'll say to maria like okay i'll you know she a lot of times she gets the we call it the claw i'll claw the back of her of her back and kind of wake her back up every morning she'll just spin and turn and sit up and there's times where um at night i'll do it i'm just so exhausted I'm, yeah honey you got to make it work for me like you've got to get in a certain position yeah. that i can be comfortable <laughs> but with the foot massage 
if someone's lying on a bed, for example, yeah. I just roll up an office chair and then I'll have like a small towel and on the towel will be whatever moisturizers I'm using or she likes the CBD cream lately that it's tingly and medicated and it feels like, <laughs> and um, but I sit there and I, I go to work and then sometimes yeah. I'll put on a show that I like. Healer Kev. You know, <laughs> well, I make it work for me. So it's like of something that's like, maybe it's like a comedy or something just kind of mindless. Um, and I'm like, you can, you're going to get this, put on, you can put on an eye mask and lie down. If you, if you don't like what's on the TV, fine, you can block out your ears, but you got to make it work for me too. Mm -hmm. And that usually is the most comfortable thing. If I'm on the roller chair and with Leeds, it was great because she was on a twin mattress, a twin bed. So I could roll, I could, I just would roll to her hands, her arms. Then I would roll around yeah. do one foot. Then I roll do the other foot. Then I roll around do the other foot. So, um, yeah, you have to have a person that's going to make it easy on you too. So you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be in an uncomfortable position to do it. Um, so Maria's gotten good at that. Like a lot of, like being <laughs> like, okay, I need to be able to see the TV or whatever, or listen to whatever music I want to listen to. And But yeah, and it's easy. And I think that's, it's got to be, we, I only do it to, because I'm just trying to do something to relieve, but I will say 100% of it, it's always worked with her tumor pain every time i've done it she's like That's afterwards crazy. like okay no i feel better i'm okay like and then she'll just sleep it off whatever is left so yeah i've i'm googling reflexology foot places near us so we're gonna go <laughs> no you just use me oh, okay. well your guy will know your acupuncture because because uh, does he do needles in your feet or just yeah he does yeah so you're doing it but then find out where to rub for for you your stomach and then like she said your liver, liver. Mm -hmm. Well, you just have to keep peeling the layers away. Yeah. We have to keep going to the source of this. So I think, yeah, find out what's good for liver and for stomach and or where those areas. And I bet you anything, they'll be on your foot. They'll be the most sensitive. So that oh, happens yeah. too. Well, he's, when yeah, you push on before. certain things oh, yeah. that are bothering you or you get an, an acupuncture needle, certain places of your feet. No big deal. Then all of a sudden it's like, ow, and like, oh, well, I always know that's your liver. There are certain oh. points that I'm always like, oh, every time I'm like, what is that? And he's like, well, mm, that's X, Y, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I just think that whatever he's relieving, whatever you're still doing is it's so aggravated your mm. organs mm -hmm. that whatever you're ingesting, however you're living. It's there's just so deeply aggravated mm -hmm. that we've just I, what I said from day one that there's a fire down there mm -hmm. that has to be put out, and I think um, so going to him is going to help, but I think whatever you're doing, no, you have to get at the root. Yeah. Is I think is 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 aggravating everything more, and that's why like she, which I go bring it back to what Gabby was saying, she's not about no, no let's add more, no, no let's yeah. add less, let's pull back, yeah, let's cut things out, let's no 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 and simplify so anyway yeah like that was that was good a good good interview and i know that it affected you and i bet you she's going to work with you now and yeah. help you get to the answers and um yeah i liked her I, I i i have a lot of faith in her i love her approach she has a kind of a regular gal approach to it she does which i like yeah i think she's know. really wonderful and by the way how about those recommendations on books i'm so mm. in on that i want that 62 page one yeah. I, was it even that long? I think so. I think yeah. that's what it was. And what was the the title? Was uh, I wrote it, was, it down? I wrote it down too. Bill. Book man thinketh, as a man as, thinketh. As a yeah, as a man thinketh. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Not I'm in written too. in 1900. And then, um, then there's the book on the benefits of castor oil, which again I love because that's the just Edward something case. we can all buy and use. And on Thrive, mm -hmm. you guys, I have mine. Not the one I, because you have to have a specific one that you ingest, but I wouldn't recommend ingesting it um, unless you're told to. But just for the massages, I got my castor oil on Thrive. So a lot of you got Thrive when we had them on our show um, and sponsoring our show. So use your Thrive if you did and get castor oil because you want like a good quality one, a high grade one. Um, and but I would buy that, that book beautiful. to know when to use it and how to use it. Yeah, well, we can just—I think we can use what she was telling us about the castor oil, like doing the the packs. Yes, you can do it morning and night. That's a on great your body place to start. Yep. Uh huh. And that then was great advice. Massaging your hands and feet with the castor oil too. The also the other thing is too, and we probably have to have her back for this: building the life you want through thought. Yeah. 
so she she went over it very briefly but it was like visualization yeah. she went the tips and then unfortunately i had questions around that and i wanted to go back to that but um anyway hopefully there's still enough in there for everyone to benefit all the heels call the benefit i think there is so yeah because uh yeah build the life you want through thought mm-hmm mm-hmm I, you know, it's funny. I will say in Ayurvedic medicine, other people will say how much you can get nutrition from air and energy mm, and oh people yeah. you're around. Because, you know, I know Yogi Cameron, Maria, you know, a friend of Maria's and of mine, he would say, oh, my God, there's like yogis who just they live on barely any food. Very, very, very little food. Yeah. But they get their nutrition through sun, through air through love so many things that's why even with you Kelsey I'm like I, I think unfortunately as, as painful as it's always been for you I think it's, it needs to get worse before it gets better and I think fasting is probably a better thing and I think you can get your nutrition somewhere else because your body's not able to process anything you're putting in there right now mm. but back to what um, Yogi Cameron said I'll, I'll take it to like Stephen Lemieux who you know he you know he helps me produce the show we've worked together for a decade and he's now on the set making a short film and his energy his texts everything is different in the greatest way mm. and i think because he's and listen and stevens when you hear me reference people who are up all night playing video games and living on pots and pots of coffee and sugars and bad things that are like and then being around other people who are like dark and negative at times and watching the news too much and all that stuff that i think has vastly affected him I will say that, you know, he did this job here for me. Um, and then even at After Buzz, he did it because it was a, just a great job and a great opportunity, but it might not have really been mm. what made his heart sing. And, right. it prob and it wasn't, but it was a great entryway in, which we all have to pay our dues. Mm. So he learned everything, lighting, direct. I mean, he learned everything. But I think that he can, he may be getting his nutrition let's say in his healthiness from doing what he loves right so even if he is still going to drink coffee and play video games he might be able to do that because he's getting you know he's getting a different kind of nutrition from other areas and again i don't want to <laughs> give up my i don't want to i don't know it's probably not fair i'm using steven i'm just it's just because you all know him um and it just speaks to all of us so if you know you can't get off coffee let's say or there's just certain things you can't do right now it could just be a matter of doing things you love yeah and find out where your joy is and, and and finding a way to really pursue that that might just literally turn so many things around so anyway i agree on that note I'm sure on that note you guys um kelsey what do we say <laughs> kevin kevin started whispering yes you can tell when Kev's running out of steam because his voice goes around. Ah, too. Okay, you guys. Peace and blessings to you all. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep, I don't know how many times we can go to the well. I know. Maria's like, when Maria said the right thing, she's like, always. You know, one of the first things Maria said to me when we first started dating, her dad needed, um, he needed a foundation dug in like a day and a half, like a day. And it was a giant foundation for an addition they were putting on the house and he'd spent all this money but the inspector said nope it's you cannot build this on a on a slab you need to go do like a six foot foundation and the the found the the land they built the house is the house built on is all ledge which means all rock which means good luck digging a six foot foundation six <laughs> foot deep and then i don't know if it was god it must have been like feel like it was probably like maybe like 12 by 20 it's huge and i had done that kind of work with my dad my whole life and i remember saying i Maria, if everyone just leaves the house and is out of there i'll go over to it we weren't the family didn't like me we weren't talking but i felt bad and i was like you know what my dad had died and i said you know he's old and at that time he was far younger than me <laughs> but i was like but if you've not done that kind of work you know so and that you know cost is such a hard worker but he like took one swing of the sledgehammer it was like kink it just hit like granite and he was like oh no and he was like what am i gonna do Maria? and i said all right i'll go over there and then i think i'd worked the night before the construction and i tended bar and 
I just like woke up and I said to Maria, I'm like, you know, Maria, honestly, I'm, I was like, I'm really tired. And she goes, and this is 19 year old Maria. She goes, that's bullshit. You never get tired. Oh my God. <laughs> like, Mother effer. So I'm like, you're right. So I went over there and, and then I got, it was like, it, I went over there at like, God, it must've been like six thirty in the morning. The sun was coming up. And then by the end, the sun was coming down. It was starting to get cold. And, you know, I, I dug so deep, I hit water, like water was coming up. I'm like, okay, have the inspector say something now, mother effer. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was just giant piles of dirt everywhere. And I'll <laughs> never forget Costa's face. <laughs> I'm like in the headband and like, I'm just, I my shirt's <laughs> off. I'm covered with dirt and sweat. And he was just like, okay, you're a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a maniac with a really good heart. Oh. He's like, Lisa, we gotta, we gotta cook for him. We gotta make him. Come on, Kevin, you're oh. done. No, no, you did enough. You did enough. Oh. And I'm like, guys, I would stay, but I have to, I have to go to work now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go to Jesus. Work. <laughs> but I always say, like, the rest was history. We were close forever and ever after that. <laughs> that was it. But, but I will say, yeah, it's, it's hard when you, you always know you have more to give. Yeah. Then you know. You have more to give. You just keep pushing through yeah, but until the wheels come off. Yeah, I was going to say, but... The wagon. And that's then, what I'm here for, to be like, and well, time out. I think what she was saying, <laughs> I'll bring it back to Gabby, it's like, I think you can push and push. You know, she was lucky at 20 to say, I'm not going to push through this. I'm actually, I'm not yeah. going to try to life hack this. Something's really wrong and I'm yeah. open to anything. Um, whereas the rest of us go... I'm tired. I'll just have a Diet Coke. <laughs> or, right. you know what I mean? We just find ways to just p keep pushing. And, um, you know, an event, like my dad did, and eventually in his early 50s, he was gone. Yeah. So you have to, eventually, it, it will catch up. Yes. Eventually, yes. you know, uh, it, you, you know, what do they eventually say? Eventually, you will get tired. <laughs> yeah, eventually, father time's undefeated. So, <laughs> you know, even Costa knows how to balance it, man. He, he like, does. knows when to sit on the chair and watch the Bruins. Have a nice glass of wine. He just knows when it goes, no, you know, yes. he'll put, or there's times where he will push and push and push for a few weeks or a month or whatever. But then he's like, nope. Okay. Now we're just going to rest and change it up a little bit. So anyway. All right. Once again, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> Once again. Once again. All right. You, well, guys. you got my sense of pride. I'm like, I'm not tired. I'll do another five shows. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it a bad way. No, but I shouldn't be like that. That's my stupid male ego. That's like childhood of like being told you're lazy. You're not tough. And you have to go. You go like, oh, yeah, I'll show the, you. You're the least lazy, strongest person I know. So. But that's what's always in the back of your head. You're being a. I know. You're being a p word. I know. You're being a pussy. I know. <laughs> sorry. I know. And then you go. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, right, you. Winnie? Oh, which is a sorry. Anyway. Anyways, you guys. But we're here to learn, as Gabby said. That's right. We're in school, so I'm That's here to right. learn that, you know, in this next century and post-pandemic, there's a new way of doing things. So, and I have. To, that's why I have to get home and figure what that is. Yeah. Uh, and you too, Kelsey. You got to figure that out too for your tum tum. Yeah, I do. So anyway, all right, you guys. Anyways, we love you guys. So thanks for being with us. Till then. Until then, be nice people. Make good choices. If you haven't watched part one of this two-parter, make sure you watch it. I'm sure you have, but just in case. And be present. Bye. Bye, bees. <laughs>